In the past, painting was done manually using paints, boards, colors, brushes, awls, and other tools. And now, with the help of digital painting softwares, artists such as Matthew Scott Cohen are able to express their feelings, ideas, and sometimes tell their stories. Why is it so that your inspiration comes solely from women? I mean, there are lots of things in the world. Well, um, there's really two layers to it for me. Okay. The top layer being it's how I process uh, women in my life and relationships. Okay. So each one is really inspired by somebody specific and I'm kind of channeling what I took from that relationship and turning it into something else to kind of deal with it and get it outside of my head. And the other part is, I'm not really exactly sure how to describe it, but there's something primal in our brains that tells us not to be horrified of our own biology. Yeah, so I'm exploring that kind of primal biology sense through them and that like reproductive quality inherent to women. It's a lot of like character-based art. It's sort of like every kid that grew up doodling in his elementary school notebook and like drawing characters from video games is now validated by having it become a fine art form. So how much does your, pa um, your painting go for, the list? Uh, prints range anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. Um, that's not framed. With the frames they're usually around a thousand. I'd say the biggest lesson is just to not be afraid of doing it. Um, you know, I've been doing this forever, but I've never tried to get into any galleries. I've always just kind of thought that if I was good enough, people would find me and recognize it, and, you know, they would find me. But that's not really how it works. So, you know, as soon as I started putting myself out there and giving it some real effort, it just started working immediately. There's a school of thought that thinks that digital painting and the artists, they're lazy people. How would you react to that? Yeah, some people would not want digital art because they think it is lazy, but I, I challenge them to watch me do it and tell me that I'm lazy for doing it. Dear artists, we appreciate you and encourage you to follow your dreams and embrace your passion. Yours truly, Zoe Chinaka. Americans are the world's most prolific coffee drinkers. 400 million cups of joe a year. It can wake you up, even make you happy. It's easy to find. Either you make it at home or buy it from a shop or a cart, although the prices vary. Hot or cold, creamy or chocolatey, it's now a veritable fashion trend. From the corporate world to that of the homeless man, we share our humanity when we share a cup of coffee. Zoe Chinaka for NYFA News. Such a pleasure always sitting here and speaking to you because you have such a grace, you know, there's a charm about you when, you know, having to speak with you. So thank you for having us once again. It's a pleasure. I'd like to start with what we started off, um, off the um, air, uh, Patito's Gang. I'm sure, you know, growing up, a lot of us watched that. Our father said, come and sit down here and watch it or something. <laughs> because, you know, it was, it was communal and, you know, lessons were learned, social lessons and so forth. And now, you know, it's mainstreaming into politics. Can you give us, you know, an idea? Because I didn't know when it came back, but thank God you told me of the air that it's back, but it's just streaming on one channel. Um, has Patitos Gang rebranded? Because it may not be the same Patitos Gang that we used to know. Well... There's been no deliberate effort to take it off its core course. Uh, but it, it, it strikes me as I travel around the world, I've run into Nigerians, in fact, uh, the most interesting was in Melbourne, Australia. Somebody was screaming across the street, saw me on the street. And, uh. Why now? Why governor? Well, actually, I, if I had my way, I wouldn't run for anything at all. Even uh, chairman of my own <laughs> office. <laughs> There are so many theories to play up when talking about the fight against Boko Haram. They say they are an Islamic sect, but we call them mere insurgents because they have taken peace, they have taken love and joy from so many homes. Welcome back from that quick break. It's time now for us to discuss, and we welcome you on facebook.com forward slash 
GMNS School TV. You can tweet at us your questions and your thoughts at GMNS School TV at Oliver Modi at Enno underscore Alfred and at Zoe Chinaka. Good morning, Nigeria. And joining me to discuss this theories and the way forward for the Buhari-led government is Professor Tony Afejuko. He is um, as a research analyst as well as a columnist, and sometimes he wears the hat of a political analyst and security expert as well. Thank you so much for coming really early and joining me on this conversation. Pleasure being here. Thank okay. you. Like I said, you're the busiest man after Buhari traveling up and down. But you wrote an article um, way back, as back as... Um, let me just let me leave out the date and just get to the article. So you titled it A Misreading of Boko Haram. And reading through that article, it actually backdates to the previous administration. If you're bringing this article up now, is, are you saying to us that there is another misreading of Boko Haram by the new government? Uh, if you want to answer that question, I will say yes and no at the same time. Thanks for joining us. On the 9th of May, culture and tourism will be making beautiful colors and we shall be part of that. I have with me the Commissioner of Tourism and Intergovernmental Relations in the person of Mr. Disson Holloway. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Yes. How has the stages been for you? It's been, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's been a very challenging uh, uh, route actually. Because uh, when we first started out about uh, six years ago, it was, we had no blueprint, we had no directions. Uh, the governor just said, you are doing carnival and you must do it well. And somehow we did, we did. Now we have a template for it. We've seen it grow. We've uh, learned that it's better for us to, to make the things in Nigeria. In, in fact, from the first day we decided we will not import anything. So because everything is made in everything Nigeria. Everything is made in Nigeria. Now Africa's fastest growing economy, this is the diplomatic capital. We are now in Bahada and I will be experiencing for you the nightlife, the exotic culture of Ethiopia. Yesterday we are at the Checheho Cultural Restaurant and I am so happy because I will be learning their dance. I heard it dance with their shoulders, but anyways, I'll be learning the music. Yes, I will welcome you into the beautiful um, Chacheho. But first, I want you to get ready because we are going to be tasting what their drinks are like as well. Are you ready? So the federal government of Nigeria is shutting down three pharmaceutical industries because of the abuse of coding by Nigerian youth. Welcome to Africa in 60 Seconds. This is a show that will bring you inside daily into the most controversial, most talked about um, subject matter for the day. They believe that the young ones have to wait their turn. Yes. I mean, why, why didn't you start from local government? No, no. Why going to the centre right away? That is the away? issue. Why? That is the issue because their system, their understanding of statecraft that has been working for them is shaped around coming to the center and pick a copy of what is coming from the ground in the name of oil Lajasi. And this is the problem. Isn't that now, what you're going to do? No. Who in the Nigerian political space today can you touch and say this man is a good politician, has done well for Nigeria or for this political space in whatever capacity? Who can you say? Unfortunately, unfortunately. I cannot, at the moment, count on my fingers and say, oh, so, so, so person has been outstanding. However, I will say, um, uh, what's his name? Um, President Omar Yaradua okay. was a man that I respect so much. Why? He was someone that, you know, for the first time, someone came up and said, you know, I was elected through a... The remarkable thing process. about this university, well, formerly Palace of Halle Selassie is that they seem to have left almost everything the same way it was. You see the vegetation, I mean echo green, that's what we're all going after. Uh, we have the spots where the students go to relax. We have the admissions block somewhere to my right. And um, I saw some tourists just a while ago standing upon this same 
lion head. Oh, this is really incredible. Welcome now to Health Diaries as we talk and join the rest of the world to commemorate the 2015 World Immunization Day. Now, it's not just a day, it is a week-long commemoration and we are joining the rest of the world to close the gap because that is the theme they're standing on this year, 2015. And guess what? One in five children actually miss out on healthy childhood because of, you know, deficiencies that they have in their immune system. That's exactly what immunization is all about. But of course, let me throw it to the doctor to explain <laughs> immunization. What is immunization? Immunization is actually done to boost the body's immune system. So when you, when you talk about immunization, what you're doing basically is you're introducing, you're introducing, if for example, you want to do a measles, immunization against measles, you would introduce a little bit of the measles virus so that the body can mount up immunity really? against it and understand oh, okay. that when this now comes, I will be ready to fight. A pass mark. Who in the Nigerian political space today can you touch and say, this man is a good politician, has done well for Nigeria or for this political space in whatever capacity? Who can you say? Unfortunately, unfortunately, I cannot at the moment count on my fingers and say, Oh, so 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 person has been outstanding. However, I will say, um, uh, what's his name? Um, President Omar Yaradua okay. was a man that I respect so much. Why? He was someone that, you know, for the first time, someone came up and said, you know, I was elected through a rigged process. However, we intend to change that. He was able to speak with the people of Niger Delta and engage them and say, oh, we can actually have a country that can work for all of us. He had some skills that I admire. Then okay. the personality of um, President Obasanjo. Now, here is my thinking about it. Mm. He, had the, uh, he had some kind of connection between the people uh, he was able to connect, between mm. the North, the South, the West. He was able to bring them to an extent, at that at his time, we had so much, we had uh, not so much of these uh, rancor and rivalries between uh, different ethnicities yeah. and all of that. Even though there are some of those things that he did, like silencing some people that, uh, um, you know, raised their voices. We're not talking about having just vision, but having a positive vision that impacts the society. So, really, if, you, if we have, we have people that uh, we are dictators that have made very good leaders in the past. It's now, for those of you who want the release of the Chibok schoolgirls, there may be hope around the corner. Great indeed, right? But when you look at the raging spate of killings of people in the northeastern part of Nigeria, do you still feel that way? Do you think that this group, they are willing to sit on the table and have a conversation with President Muhammad Buhari? Good morning, Nigeria, and welcome to our top story. We're looking at this issue along with others that, you know, border on our defense mechanism, especially as we try to keep pushing Boko Haram insurgents. Now, joining us to discuss this is a research analyst, and he is also a columnist. His name is Bayo Olufunda. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. My, my take is that we've had a history of botched negotiation with Boko Haram. Boko Haram, you can't put a face to it. You can only put a face to people that are ready to talk to you. Remember that in 2014, early 2014 or late 2013, when the uh, Jonathan government tried to negotiate with Boko Haram, mm. Abu Bakr Shekau came up and said, They are the ones who need yes, to that, that, what, what harm have we done? We are custody, custody for over a year now. It's really, really sad, okay? There's a question I want to ask yeah. you, but I'd rather, you know, throw to Victor, ask Victor, you know, what he thinks. Now, Victor, let me ask you this question. We know we're heading straight to you for News Express. Do you think that the only way we will feel that, you know, Buhari has won the war against Boko Haram. Do you think it is to get the Chibok girls or should we just forget it? Especially when our guest believes that Boko Haram, they do not want to negotiate with us. Well, the thing is, uh, a, lot of, a lot of emotion is involved, you know, when you talk about the Chibok girls. 
Buhari is a father, so is every other politician, you know, either a father or a mother. And I think it's along this line that the, the government uh, is, is wanting to be careful not to be seen as being insensitive, you know, because people would say, if these were your daughters, would you be uh, talking like this? So, so I, I think that's what uh, the government is really trying to do. Well, we'll be, I'll be asking you that question when we come back. Bayo Lofunda is still with us, and um, we'll be looking closely at um, more attachments to this negotiation process. Do stay with us. We're heading straight to the News Centre for News Express. They say most wars, however furious or vicious, actually ends up at the table. Now, let's play this video back 10 years ago. Remember the story of the Niger Delta militants? They went to table with um, the president, and guess what? Things were sorted, and they got amnesty. But is that the same case with Boko Haram? Now, let's join um, and welcome our guest, Bayo Olukbonda. I got it now, did I? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. But this is definitely a developing story that we will be keeping tabs mm. on. Mm. Thank you so much, thanks, Bayo. Thanks, So, before Thank I go, you. no negotiator with Boko Haram. We should have Boko Haram. We have Bayo. That's listening. Bayo's thought. But then, it. Buhari is a man uh, that we have to, you know, pray for. And, um, I mean, he, he does have a mind of his own, of course, with advice. All right. If you want to share your thoughts with Thus, should Boko Haram be negotiated with, head on to facebook.com forward slash GMNS School TV or you can tweet at GMNS School TV. Up next is entertainment. Now, find out more of the details from Dolako Oni's wedding. Mm. Stay with me. Now, just on Tuesday, the National Peace Committee for the 2015 general elections remember that they brokered a peace deal between the president, Mohammed Buhari, and his predecessor, that is, good luck, Abila Jonathan. Of course, with the whole insecurity and tensions rising at that time, they broke that peace deal. Well, on Tuesday, they visited the president at the Asarok Villa. Intentions were not quite clear from the onset, but now we have sips here and there of what exactly went down, and we still have some rumors that we need to clear out. Now, to shed some more light on this, we have with us Bola Oba, our, one of our favorite public affairs analysts, and um, we want to you know, dig into his brain for a minute or two. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. You're my favorite. <laughs> oh, no, <I'm> not. Not. <laughs> now, so what do you know that went down? Let's start with that, the general idea that you have, or your information that you have from the meeting that the national, the courtesy visit that the National Peace Committee paid to President Mohammed Buhari. I really like your intro. I like your intro because um, when the last elections took place, we had so many unprecedented phenomena uh, that turned out to all be positive for the Nigerian democracy. Uh, the incumbent, for the first time in our political history, uh, lost a popular you know, mandate, lost an election. And we know the situation in Africa that sometimes things like that mm -hmm. tend to degenerate into uh, some very disturbing political, political and indeed uh, socio-economic economic this thing. We all noticed how the extension of the election. Okay. And your comments. Now please go on to social media. We are at the GP Show on Twitter, on Instagram, and of course on Facebook. We do have our YouTube page. It is all channeled for your viewing pleasure. Please do go on to www.youtube.com forward slash the GP Show. We'll be right back right after this, but I want you to take a note of this particular incident because this will be the start up of our conversation. Stay with us. Regular exercise into your daily shuttle, 
may seem difficult at first, but the key is finding the right exercise. I love to work out because it keeps me in shape and honestly it makes me feel good. Like, I don't have to worry about being stressed out, it's how I get my stress out. I do it at least three times a week. I really do it uh, to keep up my confidence. I definitely love this uh, bike because, you know, New York City, you can never walk enough, right? <laughs> Speaking of walking, these shorts and sneakers were made just for that. To keep in shape and also my family, uh, they suffer from diabetes, so I don't want that to occur. Do you want to add years to your life or life to your years? Exercise. And more importantly, with your kids. Huh? A bicycle. They stopped and restarted my heart 13 times. I have a leaking valve, edema, sleep apnea, sciatica, everything in the book. I can drop dead at any minute, but because my mind is strong, I keep myself in check. Zoe Chinaka for NYFE News.